Alright folks, so in this video what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about uh, choosing a battery for ham radio. Now this might be a backup battery that you're using in the event of a power outage. It could be a battery that you're using for portable or uh, field ops, something along those lines. But uh, I just wanted to cover a couple of the topics that, uh, that you may encounter or decision points that you're going to need to make when picking up or purchasing a battery. So let's go ahead and start off talking about how much power do I need. Um, that is a question that uh, should come up first. Well, anyhow, let's figure out this. What you want to do is you want to figure out how long you're going to be operating. And what that means is, is that maybe uh, your backup battery's got to last 12 hours, or maybe you're going to be out in the field uh, doing portable for 7 hours or 6 hours, something along those lines. So that's the first thing you need to figure out is really is how long do you want to use the actual battery. And then uh, what you want to do is figure out the amount of time per hour that you're going to be receiving versus the amount of time uh, per hour you're going to be texting. Now, this is not uh, an exact science, but it's pretty important to get it close. Uh, nobody's going to come out and say, I am going to be texting 58.5% of the time, and then actually have that work out uh, to be exact. What you want to do is be close, and then uh, once you have that figured out, we'll be able to apply a little bit of a math formula to that to kind of get some rough estimates. The other thing is a lot of times people will power things other than the radio uh, on, their, on their battery. Maybe you're going to charge a cell phone or maybe you're pe uh, using a GPS or a tuner or something like that that's going to do a parasitic draw. Um, and if you're going to do that, you're going to need to account for that in your battery as well. Now it's time for some quick math. And uh, we have the formula at the top and essentially it's your RX requirements plus your TX requirements multiplied by your hours of operation will give you your total power requirements. So for this to work, we are going to need to use some variables. And uh, what I have here is, is that X is the percentage of time in RX. So in this case, we're going to say that we are going to be receiving 80% of the time. Y would be the percent of time that you expect to be transmitting. And in this example, we're going to be 20% of the time. Z is the uh, total hours of operations. Um, then I have A, which is the load on RX, and from the previous slide I mentioned that you need to know your, uh, your load, um, and you also need to know your load on TX. And again, for this example, uh, every radio is different. You need to either use a meter to find out, or you need to check your product documentation. But in this example, we're going to be 2 amps on RX, which is a little high, um, and we're going to be 10 amps on, uh, on TX. So if we go and we plug those numbers into the formula, what we have really is 80% of 2 amps for the duration of an hour and 20% of 10 amps for the duration of an hour times 4 hours, which is going to be our total time uh, in operation. So when you do that math, it boils it down to 1.6 amps plus 2 amps uh, times 4 or 3.6 amps times 4, which would mean for this particular example, we would need 14.4 uh, amps uh, amp hours of battery power. Now, what's important is, is that your battery can also deliver your maximum load. So in this case, it would be that I need a battery that can deliver 10 amps uh, continuously in order to satisfy my, uh, my TX requirements. You can't do a math formula like this and say, okay, well, I've got a, I've got a four amp hour battery and uh, I'm going to use that for 20 minutes. It kind of doesn't really work that way. So you want to make sure that your battery is also capable of delivering the required load. Okay, now we're going to talk a little bit about some of the common battery types. Uh, and there are two main types. You have uh, your lead-acid batteries, which is probably what most people are familiar with. And then you have uh, lithium-ion batteries, which uh, I want to say are newer, but they're not really. They've been around for a long time, and plenty of folks are using them. But when you talk about lead-acid batteries, the first one is uh, the flooded lead-acid battery. And uh, this is typically what you would see in a car or in a truck. They're cheap. They're a low-cost solution. And they have what's called a high max current output. Um, and that is really uh, cranking amps is what they call that, which means for a short burst of time, they're able of delivering a tremendous amount of current to start an engine. Um, they have a really low what's called depth of discharge, which means that if you put a long load on them for continuous periods of time, the battery will die uh, relatively quickly. So these don't make a good option for powering ham stations. Uh, the next one that we have on the list is called a sealed lead acid battery, and you see these referred to as an SLA battery. Um, and there's two different kinds, uh, well there's probably multiple kinds, but the two popular ones are absorbed glass mat and then a gel cell. 
Um, and the difference is really based around the number of plates, plate thickness, the, the how porous the plates are. Um, and they kind of dictate how these batteries should be used. Uh, absorbed glass matte batteries, um, they have a little bit of a lower internal resistance and you can charge them pretty quickly so they make a, uh, they're very popular with uh, solar panel users or people who have uh, solar generators. Um, they can have a pretty high capacity and they're, little, they're, they're relatively low cost. Um, people use these in uh, mobility vehicles like uh, like wheelchairs, for example, or um, maybe the assistant cart you see at the at the Walmart. Um, the first battery that I bought for uh, using for ham radio, I bought uh, a wheelchair battery, and, and it was fantastic. Um, they also use these in golf carts, um, and of course, they're very popular with a uh, ham radio. The uh, the other type, the the gel sealed lead acid battery. Um, they actually have a gel in them, they're, and they're, they're totally maintenance-free battery. You can mount them on their side, you can mount them upside down. Um, and these are nice because they're not as sensitive uh, to depth of discharge damage um, as like an AGM or a flooded battery, which means that you can, you can drain these batteries pretty far, um, which is a bad practice. You shouldn't do it, but in the event it happens with a gel-sealed battery, it's uh, less damaging. The last thing I was going to mention is really around deep cycle lead acid batteries. Now you can have an AGM or a gel sealed battery that is also deep cycle. So if you buy one of these uh, lead batteries, you want to make sure that it's deep cycle. And again, that really just is that it's not for delivering a high burst of current, but more of a continuous stable uh, current that you could use to power electronic devices at a consistent level for a longer period of time. Now in terms of uh, lithium ion batteries, there's a couple of different types. Uh, the first one I'm going to talk about is a lithium iron phosphate battery. Uh, and these are really the best choice um, for a 12 volt application or, or a SLA battery alternative. Um, the way that the cells uh, combine, they, they uh, typically run around 3.6, 3.7 volts. Um, and then you can use uh, four of these cells to get right on the nose uh, where you want to be from a 12 volt uh, battery pack that uh, either you or a vendor has put together for you. They also are very stable. So you hear a lot of, in the news about like vapors or people using uh, lithium ion batteries exploding, catching fire. Um, the lithium iron uh, batteries uh, generally are more stable. Uh, the next one I'm going to talk a little bit about is a lithium cobalt oxide battery. Um, and you hear these uh, referred to as an LCR uh, battery. Sometimes you even call, hear them called an ICR. And these are the batteries that typically come in uh, your consumer electronics like flashlights, cell phones. They're in laptops and cameras. Um, they can be dangerous, especially when damaged. And I think you saw that with like some of the, uh, some of the cell phones that were blowing up on planes. Uh, the other thing is, is that cobalt is a relatively rare, and uh, it makes these batteries a little bit more expensive. And they generally have a lower discharge rate, so they're not um, as capable at uh, delivering a high continuous current like a lithium uh, iron or the next battery we're going to talk about, the lithium manganese oxide. Um, lithium manganese oxide batteries, they have a lower cost and a longer life. Um, they're moderately safe. They're safer than the cobalt, but less uh, less stable than the um, than the uh, lithium iron iron uh, batteries. Um, and these lithium manganese devices are used in high drain devices, the, like batteries in cars, for example, like a hybrid car. Um, and some of the newer laptops, or like the super high output flashlights, are using these now. Um, they're also very popular uh, in the vape world with uh, vapors. Um, they have high discharge rates. But uh, what, what uh, I would say is, is that the lithium iron phosphate is definitely the, uh, the best battery for uh, ham radio applications if you're going to choose to use a lithium battery in general. So on some of the earlier slides, we talked about something called depth of discharge. Some people refer to this as state of charge or state of discharge. And really, it's just a way to measure um, the capacity or best practices or guidelines for uh, capacity usage of a particular battery. And uh, in this case, we're going to talk about two 24 uh, amp hour batteries. One's sealed lead and one's lithium. Uh, in the second row, what I have is DOD for depth of discharge. And uh, this is pretty hotly contested. Uh, in this example, we're going to talk about a 50% drain of the sealed lead acid battery. We mentioned that if you drain these batteries down too far, you can do uh, long-term damage or uh, damage that can't be repaired. 
Uh, and some people will be like, uh, "Ape, you're crazy. You should only you should only uh, drain a SLA battery to 25 percent or 25 percent of capacity." Uh, and uh, in this example, we're going to go 50. The important thing to realize is, is that the lithium uh, battery, for example, we have at 80 percent. Now, some people say you can 100 percent drain these batteries. You can drain them all the way without damage. Um, but again, in this example, we're going to use 50 and 80. You can debate and put stuff in the comments as to what you think is right. But uh, any numbers, uh, it's generally accepted that you can drain a lithium battery further than a sealed lead acid battery. Um, so in this example, what we do is we take 24 amp hours and we multiply it by 0.5 or 50 percent. That gives us uh, 12 amp hours of capacity, so usable power. Um, in the example for the lithium battery, 24 times 0.8 that gives us 19.2. Um, so at the end of the day, you get more power, regardless of what you think your depth of discharge is, um, out of a lithium battery than you do a sealed lead. If you move your lithium to 100 and your sealed lead up to 25, it only compounds that difference. So let's summarize what we've learned about the sealed lead acid batteries. They're much cheaper. Um, they're heavy. The, uh, the lithium comparable is about 30% of the weight. Um, they have a lower usable power. We just covered that in our depth of discharge conversation. Um, they also have a lower recharge count, uh, anywhere from 500 to 1,000. Some people debate this a little bit too, and the better care you take of your batteries in terms of uh, dis discharge and charging, the longer they'll last. Um, and then if you look at one of these SLA batteries, uh, you do want to make sure that you compare a starting versus a deep cycle battery and look for something on the deep cycle side of the house. Uh, it's generally a better option. Uh, with lithium batteries, we've determined that they are expensive. Uh, they cost significantly more. The prices are starting to come down a little bit as they become more popular with the laws of supply and demand and things like that. But uh, in general, lithium batteries are more expensive. Um, I did mention that they weigh about 30% of a similar powered battery uh, of the lead variety. Um, and we've covered the higher usable power with the depth of discharge conversation. Um, and they have a higher recharge count, 1,000 to 4,000 times. Uh, in this picture here, you can see um, kind of a DIY lithium battery project uh, in its early stages. Uh, many people choose to build their own battery kits, which is kind of a neat and uh, interesting thing in and of itself. I hope that uh, helps anybody who is trying to make a decision or looking to purchase a battery for uh, ham radio use. Um, if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and post them below and I'll do my best to respond. Also, if you like this video, why don't you click the thumbs up and share or, uh, or even subscribe. I want to say thanks everybody for watching. I really do appreciate it.